hold it at an angle which is, what did I say I sharpened them at? 23 degrees. Quick question so on that. Does the degree alter with the thickness of the blade? Or do you, so we go from 3 to 5 or whatever, so you still keep the same degree? Still the same degrees, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I didn't know whether like, a thicker blade would need a slightly a slight change in the No, no, it's like, it's like I was saying, um, you've got um, that knife, that knife, um, the grind, you, I don't know, can you see the grind on yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, the grind goes halfway up the cheek. Yeah. But it's exactly the same angle as... Exactly the same angle as that one. Right at the edge, it's just, this is made from... Um, three and a half mil that's made of five millimeter okay so you do actually keep the same right. keep the same edge at the same angle at the cutting edge <coughs> so um, having been doing this for a little while I've got a fairly good eye and um, I know that I, I know that that's about I'm holding it about <coughs> 11 and a half no yeah 11 and a half degrees that's 23 isn't it? half of 23 yeah <laughs> So I know I'm holding it round about, round about there. And actually, you can remain remarkably constant if you set your work up um, to be just below the level of your knees, I find is always the best. Um, you can keep that angle quite constant. So I'm gonna pull that towards me. And um, what I'm doing is a slight rocking motion like that and a slight turning motion like that as well, just so that I get all the way along the blade in one, uh, in one stroke. Now, I know um, Mr. Mears has done some very good uh, instructional um, videos about, um, about sharpening knives. Um, but he says, oh no, you've got to do five on this side and then turn it over and do five on the other side, otherwise you'll end up with an uneven knife. No, you won't. no just keep going on one side until you can feel that burr. And uh, as I'm talking to you, I'm just pulling, the finger, pulling my finger off that blade and, um, and the burr, burr's already up on that. Okay, it's up pretty quickly. What grit's that you on? That grit I'm using is... I don't know. That's about. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's about. No, it's it's actually. It's a no. It's not a thousand. Yeah, it was about eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. It's about eight hundred grit this one. So it's. Um, so it's sort of like a medium fine. So it's quite a. Well, it's a fairly aggressive one. I mean, if you if you're sharpening a Scandi knife, Scandi ground knife, then you want to use an aggressive stone because you've got so much metal to move. Okay. Um, with this uh, with this compound grind, I probably would have gone straight to a three thousand, but uh, I just uh, I'm just doing a demonstration here, so it doesn't really matter. So the grind is up on that uh, the the burr is up on that side now. So I've been grinding that edge, and it's pushed a little piece of metal like that, and I can feel that as I'm running my finger down it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it the other way um, and I'm going to hold it at, at precisely at my 11 and a half degrees and uh, then I'm just going to push that push that away from me. Now some people say oh no, no, no you've got to pull that towards you or you go oh, no 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 you've got to go up and down like this it doesn't matter it's up to you it's still going to raise that burr um, it's just how you feel most comfortable doing it. Okay. How hard are you pressing down? I'm pressing down reasonably hard. Yeah. yeah, I'm pressing down reasonably hard. There's a there's a fine line between pressing down too hard and gouging, in. And gouging into your stone. Um, and you'll usually find as well that if you get your angle wrong, you'll feel the uh, knife ga ga taking a gouge into your stone. So you bring it back a bit. Um, and then if you lower it down, sometimes you can feel it skating. And if it's skating, your angle's a bit too shallow. Okay, so it's always just about the right, just about the right angle. 
but if you start off if you pick your if you pick your angle most important thing is to be constant with that angle so you can start off it might be gouging into the stone a little bit it might be too upright or too flat but just go lightly for a bit and very quickly you know your edge will be will be that angle so I'm going to feel for the uh, feel for the bird coming up there it's coming up on the it's coming up on the tip but down towards the uh, down towards the hilt it still needs a bit more I'm going to just wet the stone a little bit get rid of the um, the bits of stone which have come off and reveals the sharp stone underneath and that's it that's it <coughs> burrs up on that side of the leather up there got some compound on it now to strop it you're going to use um, you're going to bring the angle of the knife up a bit okay and you're not going to do much with it you don't really need to do much at all with it because what you're doing is you're taking that final burr off the edge of your knife and uh, I'm not going to go much further because I've got quite a burr on that and okay. it's actually ripping your um, <laughs> ripping that up a bit so it's like you, sh you sharpen one way and strop the other is that right? so if you sharpen your knife towards you you strop away well doesn't no it doesn't, doesn't really, matter. really matter doesn't really matter i tell you that one of the things about stropping is that if you strop that way you're going to cut your belt in half yeah okay <laughs> so you don't you don't strop that way <laughs> you strop that way okay and then bring the other edge towards you Okay, that's the only that's the only reason you're going to have to go in one direction rather than the other, so you don't chop your belt in half. Okay, but that's stropping. All right, yeah. the important thing to remember is you uh, um, uh, you have a compound on there; it can cut it yeah. quicker. Some people then like to go onto a bare piece of leather, a piece of leather which hasn't got any compound on it. Right. Um, um, and you get they get a finer polish. Okay, but. Uh, um, yeah, James got some Tormek on here. You can use Solvol Auto Sol. I use the uh, High Fin. Yeah. Um, I've heard of people using toothpaste. Before. Yeah, that's what I use. <laughs> Fine. That's no problem. Maybe fresh. It's what crazy it paste, isn't it? What's the point of taking two things into the woods? Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Like it. Doesn't make any difference. Mold woodwork okay. teacher used to say, "Put that in your hand." Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard a lot of um, a lot of carpenters um, say that when they're sharpening their, um, I'm not going to do it with a blade. <laughs> but what they would do is they get their plain iron, which is uh, uh, just a blade with a very broad edge, and uh, and they would slap it on their hand. Mm. Okay, they're basically pushing it along and back mm. like that. And uh, they say that would actually polish the uh, and yeah. strop the blade. Obviously, carpenters have got pretty hard hands anyway. So. Yeah, carpenters have got pretty hard hands. <laughs>